Hi, and welcome to GitHub Checkout. I am Sasha Rosenbaum, and my guest today is Maya Kozerkovsky. Maya, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm Maya. I'm a product manager here at GitHub working on software supply chain security. Nice. And so the feature we're talking about today is dependency review. So tell us a little bit about what dependency review really is. Sure. So when you're introducing new dependencies into your environment um, as part of a pull request, so to a change to a manifest file or a lock file, dependency review lets you see what the changes that you're making to those dependencies are, so you can better understand whether or not you want to merge that pull request. I see. So we already have Dependabot uh, for reviewing your supply chain dependencies. How is that different? Dependabot sends you an alert after the fact. So after you've uh, merged a dependency that, it, that has a vulnerability, um, Dependabot sends you an alert. Dependency review tells you before you've actually merged in that dependency, so you can choose to, to never introduce that vulnerability to begin with. Um, Dependabot, I want to point out, um, also sends you a PR. So um, after the fact, it does send you a PR. And Dependabot will also send you an alert if there's a new vulnerability. So if, you're, if, you're, if your dependencies don't change, you still need Dependabot to help you keep your existing dependencies up to date. I see. So I kind of need them both. So Definitely. if I have dependency review enabled and I'm looking at a pull request, what should I be looking for? You can see lots of information about the, the what I would think of as the risk of your dependency. So you can see uh, what dependencies you're adding, modifying, or removing. And for each of those, uh, how old it is, if it's introducing any new vulnerabilities, um, how many dependents it has, and the license that it's using. And that information together helps you determine whether or not you want to have that in your environment, because you might have restrictions in your environment around some of those, some of those, um, um, some of that metadata, some of those things you want to keep keep in score in your in your environment, or you might not want to to take a dependency on something that you don't know where it comes from. And so, better understanding a little bit more about that dependency helps you decide whether or not it it should be in your environment. I see. So, it, would there ever be a use case where I would choose to merge a dependency if it has a known vulnerability? Um, I mean, I think yes. I, I hate saying that as a security person, but yes. Uh, sometimes a patch isn't available. So if you're on the latest version and the latest version is vulnerable, that's probably still the best version for you to be using. Um, again, assuming you need to be using that dependency. Uh, another situation might be that you're, you know, making lots of small changes, which is a good, a good principle in general in code development. So if you are making a small change to do a minor upgrade and then, you know, testing things out and then you plan on keep upgrading, that's also a good reason to upgrade to a vulnerable version to kind of get out of your current state and into a better state. Interesting. So kind of like might choose to accept the risk if the next state is still better than the current state. Right, I mean, right. I or, if, or if a vulnerability, if a patch fixes a critical vulnerability and you only have a low vulnerability left, right? I still don't love it. You know, please patch all the way, but it's a much better state already. Right. Uh, so with dependency review, uh, is it just me who's going to be able to view the vulnerabilities or is that other people on my team as well? Anybody with read access to your repo can see dependency review. Um, so they can see information about the changes that you're making in a PR. It's really important to note here that they're not seeing vulnerability information after the fact. So they're not seeing um, what you did introduce in your environment, right? It's a static moment in time. It doesn't necessarily apply to your current environment. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that that's uh, that you're you're still affected by that that vulnerability. It's it's really just at that moment in time. What do they need as a reviewer to be able to provide the best information and the best decision they can for for your team? I see. So if I wanted to go and enable this today, how would I enable a dependency review? Uh, you don't really need to. So if you're already using a dependency graph, uh, dependency review just works. Dependency graph is enabled on all public repos by default, and actually you can't turn it off because that's how we keep track of who's relying on what. And for private repos, you can enable dependency graph. And once you enable dependency graph, dependency review just works. Oh, that's very cool. And again, and available in public and private repos, which is awesome. Um, can I use dependency review to see vulnerability information for all of my dependencies? You can use dependency review for uh, the ecosystems that dependence, dependency graph supports. So there's six ecosystems that, that we currently support, and those will automatically show that information there. 
I see. So all of this sounds really, really cool. And would you like to show us what it actually looks I would looks love like? to show you what it looks like. <laughs> all right. Let's do that. So I'm going to share my screen and give you a view of what we're doing. Great. So I'm in a, in a repo here and I'm just going to check out dependency review. Uh, and, uh, first I just want to point out that to the earlier point on, you know, how do we enable dependency review? I've already enabled uh, in this repo, I've already enabled dependency graph, dependbot alerts, and dependbot security updates. And you'll actually see that because I have a lot of security issues. But who has time for those? There are pull requests. Let's go deal with that first. So I have a pull request from, you know, myself, very, very practical here, uh, where I'm changing a manifest file. And in this pull request, you'll see in the, in the normal view of this pull request of the files changed, you'll see I'm upgrading a uh, version of a dependency, I'm upgrading version of another dependency, and I'm adding a dependency. So actually what I was doing here was I was trying to add this new dependency that I have here, uh, vertex unit, and then I wanted to just upgrade these other two while I was at it, because you know, they should probably be in sync. Sounds good. So if I go over to the rich diff button here and I hit that, what I actually get is this brand new view, which is way easier to read than what I was looking at before, that tells me that I've changed a couple of dependencies and I've added a dependency. And for the dependencies that I've changed, some of them have vulnerabilities. So, you know, Vertex Web here has a high severity and a low severity vulnerability. Vertex Core has a moderate and a low. And the versions that I'm upgrading to, not only are they super old, but they're not the patched versions. That's not good. I can also see what license information I have for the, um, the vulnerabilities that I'm using in this, uh, sorry, the dependencies that I'm using in this environment. So, well, that's not what I wanted to do at all. So why don't I patch these? <laughs> Let's change these to 3.4, uh, 3.5.4 and 3.5.4. So let's go into the edit view of this quickly. Oops. There we go. And edit that file. See how hard this would be to parse if I was trying to do it myself? Like this giant file. Oh, absolutely. That's impossible to even read. I hate this. Okay. Well, I changed it to 3.4 <laughs> and 3.4. So 5.4, sorry, and 5.4. And I'll just commit that directly to the branch that I'm looking at. And uh, yeah, that looks good to me. Okay, let's go over to my dependency review. And dependency review says, yep, you're adding one dependency, which is what I was trying to do. And I modified two of my other dependencies and that's it. There's no other vulnerability information here as to what I'm adding. That looks great. I'm good, I feel, I feel comfortable merging this. I mean, you know, obviously I'm gonna run my, my test suite against it, but I feel pretty comfortable saying, this is good to go, let's, let's merge that in. So let's do that, woo. The other thing that's really cool here about dependency review is, you know, I talked about all these security issues I had to, had to work on earlier that I wasn't going to. Let's go over that. Well, first thing, I don't know if you noticed that a flash second there. I had 14 security issues before and now I have 12. That's because I actually just fixed two of them. I just fixed two of my security issues in that pull request by, by upgrading those dependencies. I actually super love how fast that tab updates with all the security alerts that literally happens within seconds. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then if I go into, you know, we're talking about Dependabot and why I still need Dependabot. Um, so Dependabot here sent me a PR to upgrade one of my other, my other um, dependencies and it says it fixes the security vulnerability. So let's go look at that again. Here I'm up updating Android SVG. Okay, sounds good. And dependency review just works. It works on the Dependabot PR too. And I can see that Dependabot is doing what it says it does. Really, that is really cool. So they kind of work together in tandem with each other to help avoid vulnerabilities. Yeah, you can see exactly what Dependabot is doing in your environment. You can see what your other developers are doing in your environment and then decide whether or not you want to include those vulnerabilities or the, sorry, those dependencies, hopefully <laughs> no vulnerabilities in your environment. I got you. Hopefully no vulnerabilities. Uh, so this is really cool. Next question, I guess, I, yeah. uh, Beg's asking is, would dependency review just suggest uh, security alternatives for the vulnerable dependencies that I have? So no, uh, dependency review just tells you whether or not something has a vulnerability. Uh, and we tell you where the patch version, uh, what patch version you need to be able to fix that vulnerability. Uh, it doesn't yet, you know, provide a commit to your, to your PR. We're not at that stage or suggest alternative uh, dependencies. We're not there either. Uh, but hopefully for now, that should be good enough for you to go in and edit the file and start making those changes yourself. And something that potentially Dependabot could also help me with, right? Could help you with, yeah. 
All right. Um, in uh, it, can I block any packages that have known vulnerabilities or like licenses that I don't want to use and stuff like that? So that's not possible today either, but that's definitely where we're, where we're heading. We're hearing a lot of interest for that. So um, this is really the first step of being able to see what you're, what's changing in your environment from a security point of view. So that then you can control what's changing your environment from a security point of view. Um, yeah, I have nothing. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this is a new feature, and I'm super excited about you know people starting to use it and us seeing uh, how it develops over time. Because obviously, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that we can do with this, but it has already given us so much in terms of upgrading dependencies. Um, it, it's one of those things that really feels um, so native to GitHub. Like it feels like it should have been there. A while ago, you know, it feels like, oh, I could just click here and see what's changed. Of course, like that's totally normal. I know, really, all the stuff that you've been working on with the supply chain just seems like it should have been a part of this ecosystem <laughs> from the beginning, right? Because like it just feels like very integrated, very logical for us to have these features. Yeah, we're happy to just have it, you know, natively in GitHub, so it's easy for you all to use. <laughs> I know this is really cool. So, um. Thank you so much for working on this and thank you for developing uh, the features and thank you for being with us. Um, one last thing is uh, if I want to get started today, uh, is there a documentation like that I should follow or something like this? Yeah, you should check out the docs, uh, the dependency um, review docs. We'll make sure to, to link it and uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been GitHub Checkout, and we're going to add some more videos in the future. So please st stay tuned and click that subscribe button. Thank you very much. Bye.